Predicting the outcome of the 2021 season. Let's go. What is up, Bengals fam? It's your boy Mike coming back at you with another Who Daily. Got some cool stuff going on today. What I wanted to do was take a look at PFF releases in the offseason, kind of these uh, uh, data driven predictions about uh, what's going to, and player rankings uh, for position groups. I want to I want to take a look at the Bengals offense. Um, we'll look at the defense maybe tomorrow, but um, I want to look at the offense, see what PFF thinks about um, you know where the Bengals players rank. We'll look at the uh, you know compared to the rest of the league. We'll look at the um, projected starting lineups um, and talk about that for a minute. Um, but yeah, let's actually jump right into this. And PFF ran through simulations, um, obviously to. Uh, kind of get, get the uh, feel for the most likely outcomes for most teams. You got average wins here. You see Tampa Bay right up there uh, toward the top with Kansas City. Obviously, um, those are going to be the two most powerful teams. They've, they're high on Cleveland. They think Cleveland's going to win 10-plus uh, games. No, I don't know. I, I'm, I, everybody is a little too high. Like I've, I've just spent a lifetime watching Cleveland. Everybody overestimating uh, how good they're going to be and then them underperforming and I you know it's just tough for me it's a lot a lot like the Bengals actually so uh, I don't know are they going to be you know that's a really really good roster they have the do you trust Baker Mayfield to uh, keep you in enough games um, to pull off 10 wins I don't know maybe uh, but it's pretty interesting that it's a pretty tight I mean the worst team here is going to be Detroit with five and a half projected wins um, you know, everybody's between your 11 and a half and five and a half with a big bunch in the middle. You got Cincinnati. So they have the Bengals kind of toward the lower third, maybe the top of the top of the last third, bottom of the middle third type of team. Seven and a half wins. Um, you guys watched my video last week. Uh, you know that I was uh, I predicted nine wins. I mean, that's uh, I think nine and uh, nine and eight is going to be the right around where they end up finishing. If Think about it this way: If they win eight games, that means they're going to lose nine. If they, you know, if they win seven, that means they're going to lose ten. And I just can't see Joe Burrow being healthy for a full season, allowing this team to lose that many games. I, you know, I think that we're going to, you know, you're going to see the Bengals surprise a lot of people uh, with as long as they're able to stay healthy. Uh, this would obviously put them, you know, last in the division. I think Pittsburgh is slated in here. Let's see where where's Where's old Pittsburgh? No, they got, <laughs> actually, this is right. This is about how I, you know, I agree with this. They've got Pittsburgh at 7.6 wins and Cincinnati at 7.7. .7. So I think that those two teams are roughly this, you know, uh, looking at about the same amount of wins. That could be true. Um, but in a division this tight, um, you, you know, a couple wins here or there could determine who the division champion is. So. That's interesting to look at. Uh, I'm a little higher on the Bengals than PFF is, but really, I you know, uh, I think seven wins is actually the, the the floor for them. I don't think they'll 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 get less than seven wins. Um, and seven wins would be a, would be a failure of a season, I think. But if you ask any, not just Bengals fans, but their players and coaches. Um, so I think that they'll use this as a little bit of a bulletin board material, just like everything else in this in this is going to pretty much be. Let's take a look at how what PFF's thinking the starting lineup's going to be. Uh, we're just focusing on the offense right now. A couple things here. I agree with all of it, except for I think Jackson Carmen's going to play right guard. Um, but we'll see. Be, the, the reason I think he's going to play right guard is because I think that long term they want him to play right tackle. So it makes sense to get him experience on the right side of the offensive line so that he can get used to what it feels like to make his drops from uh, jump kicking off of his left foot versus his right foot, uh, understanding how the blocking schemes typically go on stunts on the right side of the offensive line, that kind of stuff. So the only thing I would say, these are probably, this is probably the right personnel, but maybe Quentin Spain, the veteran uh, with a lot more experience, kicks over to play left guard and you can have – uh, Jackson Carmen then play in between two really experienced veterans in Trey Hopkins and Riley Reef. right? Um, uh, the only thing is, uh, I don't know that Drew Sample is the number one tight end on this team. I think you may see 
a pretty even split between he and CJ Uzama. Uzama is, I, I believe, a better. He's a better athlete. He's a better ca uh, pass catcher. So I think that it, when they go when they go eleven personnel, where it's going to be formation specific, uh, I think they'll split. Um, they'll split formations based on the strength of these players, uh, which is, I think was the plan when they drafted Drew Sample to begin with. So that's interesting. Just take a look at that. And we'll take a, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the defense uh, tomorrow, but right now let's take a look uh, at the quarterback rankings. There you saw real quick, Joe Burrow, they have Joe Burrow at number 18. Let's take a look at kind of the full rankings here and see what we think. Let's see. So you got Pat, uh, Patty Mahomes, you've got Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, you can't argue that Joe Burrow is any better than any of these guys. Obviously, he's not there in his career yet. Russell Wilson, these are the these are the elite quarterbacks of the league, right? And, uh, Deshaun Watson, he's really good. I'm just worried about how much he's going to be able to play. What's team, you know, what's going to happen with him? He's in a weird situation, so. Uh, that's a boomer bust type situation for Deshaun Watson. You got Josh Allen. Man, his arm is outrageous. Dak Prescott just got a big contract. Then you got Lamar Jackson, Matt Ryan, Baker Mayfield. Here's another, here's the thing I'll say. I just don't trust Baker yet. And, and you know, I know Browns fans don't care. I'm a Bengals fan saying I don't trust Baker Mayfield. Um, but if given me given the choice, hey, Mike, you're starting a team. You want Baker Mayfield. Uh, as your quarterback or Joe Burrow, it's not even close. I don't a uh, hundred times out of a hundred, I take Joe Burrow. But you know, uh, I I expect Browns fans would say the same thing, but the opposite direction, right? You got Matthew Stafford up here, Ryan Tannehill. You know, if okay, so Ryan Tannehill, if you want to consider him elite in anything at all, it's elite at not making mistakes, and that's why he's this high. I mean, his arm talent is. Pretty good, not great. Um, his decision making is is elite, um, and he is a he is essentially what we wished uh, what we wished Andy Dalton could be when he played for the Bengals. Uh, and Andy Dalton was, I would say, for a, a year or two, much better than Ryan Tannehill. But you know, Ryan Tannehill sustained it for a little bit longer. He's also got an elite running game to to fall back on in, in case he's not able to figure out how to beat a secondary you just turn around and hand it off to the absolute beast that you have standing in the backfield uh Derek Carr again I would take we're getting to the round here we're getting to the round past about 12 where I would say I would take Joe Burrow over any of these guys Derek Carr Kirk Cousins Justin Herbert you know Justin Herbert. that's a toss-up just depends on which one you like personally like better I think they're both going to be really similar production wise no way I put Ben Roth. I mean, I get it. You got to respect. You got to respect the old veteran, but there's not a chance in hell I put Ben. Ro I pick Ben Roethlisberger as my quarterback. Um, I don't. I, and I don't think he's going to even come close production-wise this year to Joe Burrow's numbers. Uh, Kyler Murray is good, but but same thing. Um, I j you know, look, I like Kyler Murray a lot, and you know, I could switch them here. You know, they did 17 and 18. Um, but the idea of having Joe Burrow sandwiched between Kyler Murray and Ryan Fitzpatrick and, and you know Daniel Jones not being far behind, like, I just can't, man. He should be higher than this. But, you know, whatever. This is just PFF's opinion. You do what you can here. And we'll take a look now. You see right here they got Joe Mixon ranked as the number 14 running back. And honestly, I think that's pretty fair given that Joe Mixon didn't play last year. But I do expect Joe Mixon to have a big year. Um, I expect him to put up a bunch of fantasy points. Put it, put it to you this way. They don't have a Giovanni Bernard on the roster that they trust like they trusted Giovanni Bernard. So all of these uh, third down packages where you need to, sh you know, you need a running back out of the backfield that's going to, you know, do the right thing, stay and block or go catch a pass, you know, or, uh, catching passes out of the backfield. So those screen, you know, design screen plays. Those are all, all the goal line touches. All those are going to go to. Uh, to Joe Mixon as long as he stays healthy. So I expect a big year out of him. I can't put him ahead of any of these running backs, though, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I think he deserves where he's at because of his injury history. I mean, he just came off. Uh, we'll see if he can stay healthy. But when healthy, Joe Bur or, I'm sorry, Joe Mixon is, is a very, very solid uh, Pro Bowl level type running back. He just can't stay healthy throughout a season. So We'll see if he can do that. I mean, he just, they gave him a big contract. They, you pay players to play, not to sit. So we'll see if he can do that. And if he can, if he can have a big year, if he can approach, you know, 13 to 1500 yards on the ground with an additional, you know, 
couple few hundred yards receiving, um, that means the Bengals are succeeding, and that's a really good thing. So uh, rooting for a big year from Joe Mixon. Uh, also look out for Chris Evans. Chris Evans could end up taking some of those Giovanni, but he's a really, really good receiving back. Uh, they, they, they draft him out of, out of Michigan this year. Uh, he'll probably take some of those snaps as a uh, third down running back uh, to spell Joe Mixon when he gets tired. Um, but let's take a look at the, at the receiving rank, the receivers ranking. This one I have a big gripe with, big, big gripe. You got, you know, obviously for the top 10, you can't really argue with. You can argue semantically, should Tyreek Hill be above DeAndre Hopkins or whatever. But those guys are all elite, right? The problem is, and I'll just show you, you'll, you'll notice the problem as I'm scrolling, right? I like all these receivers, don't get me wrong. Uh, but a lot of them are either have benefited from a new quarterback throwing them passes like these two guys, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin right um or they uh they have a new quarterback coming in that you don't and you can't really project how they're gonna how they're gonna play right so uh, i'll give you an example on this list of the new york jets Corey davis is good is he gonna be as good as he's been with zach wilson throwing him the ball i don't know i'm not big on zach wilson i don't think he's the elite quarterback everyone seems to seems to, i don't think he's worth the draft Pick that he got um but we'll see you know he could prove us wrong um i just think that it's a little bit slanderous little bit slanderous to have this many guys this many guys above tyler boyd who is in my opinion the best slot receiver in the game so what it feels like is they're valuing outside receiver play way more than they're valuing slot receiver play i guess that's fair but it, you it, there are several teams on this list with with two guys on the list, right? I showed you Tampa Bay. I showed there there are a few others that I showed you as I'm scrolling down. You cannot convince me that there are that many teams that what that have a number two receiver better than Tyler Boyd. Just can't convince me. I'm sorry. It's just not gonna ha you know it's it's not it's not a thing. Tyler Boyd is better than and and I and I would rather have him on my team you know more than several players on this list. Cortland Sutton, Robert Woods. Uh, you know, a lot of these guys directly ahead of him. You don't see any rookies on this list for a reason. Uh, but T. Higgins had an incredible rookie season that people are overlooking, and he's going to be a problem out there with these other two receivers on the field. Let's take a look now at offensive tackles, right? Uh, crazy to see Andrew Whitworth on there at number 15. He's like 50 years old. Um, you know, you'll notice some names on here, some guys from the offseason that the Bengals should have maybe should have gone after or not. Um, it's completely fair that they don't have top 10 guys on here, obviously. Um, here's the problem, though. Man, Andrew Whitworth, there he is. Just the ageless one. Uh, probably going to come back and prove everyone wrong again and be like the, num the best tackle in the league again, which is not just nutty. Um, but you looking through here. These are some good players. I'm not going to bash the offensive line, but this is a good sign here. To Jonah Williams, I would have him a little higher than 24. Um, however, because it wasn't, it, look, it, Jonah Williams was not the problem with the offensive line last year. I think he gets lumped in with a terrible offensive line in Cincinnati. And if you really look at his year, he played, he played well. Uh, however, another problem with staying on the field, you've got to stay on the field. Availability is the best ability in a lot of cases. And it's just really tough as a Bengals fan to keep looking at these lists and saying, man, if these guys just played a full season, you know, and stop getting injured. Maybe, you know, if you didn't have the bad luck injury stuff, they would be, you know, you'd have a lot more players a lot higher on these lists. And I think Jonah Williams has the skill and ability. And now coming into hopefully a season where he can stay healthy, he can move up in this list. Uh, you don't see Riley Reef on this on this list. He probably just, just outside of it. You know, I'd put him probably in the 33 to 43 range, you know, the next 10 after this list. Uh, so, you know, the Bengals are looking all right from a from a uh, tackle perspective um now let's take a look at you see right here from a center perspective they got trey hopkins coming back typically um uh, he's had an injury bug here recently but typically he's pretty solid as far as being able to play most of the games in a season and here you can see him at number 17 which i agree with i mean i don't know how you put it a rookie above him who hasn't played you have no idea how good creed humphrey's going to be um and we see it with you know billy price just because you think that they're going to be good does not mean that they will. You need to see him play. But, you know, uh, I like Creed Humphrey. We'll see how that goes. Um, the 
the thing with Trey Hopkins, this is basically what we expected. I mean, he is a league average center. And we've been saying all along, we don't need our offensive line to be elite. We need it to be league average because you've got so many weapons on the offense and a league average offensive line will, will win you a lot of games whenever you have this many elite weapons like the Bengals have. You just need to not be terrible. And that's what Trey Hopkins is. Um, one wild card to look out for, though, if Trey Hopkins and, and they're saying the reports out of camp are that Trey Hopkins is back and is and, and he's feeling fine. Uh, however, um, watch out for uh, under uh, Billy Price had his best season as a, as a Cincinnati Bengal uh, in his rookie season when the offensive line coach was Frank Pollock. Frank Pollock is back now uh, coaching this offensive line, coaching technique drilling technique and making sure that this offensive line can communicate and uh, pass off uh, pass off stunts and blocks the way that they should and there's a non look there's a non-zero chance because of how bad the guard play was last year that Billy Price may uh, put up a fight to either take Trey Hopkins starting job or take Quentin Spain's starting job that could be in play I think that they're going into it like that and the reason for that is if you take a look at the the guards, there's not a Bengals, and, and rightfully so, there's not a Bengals guard to be had on here. The only one that even would sniff at it at this point would be Quentin Spain because of his past success. Uh, however, Quentin Spain hasn't had you know top 32 guard type play in a season since like 2016. He's had it in the past, just not recently. So this is why I say these guard positions are up for grabs. I think Jackson Carmen is locked in for one of them, and I think that's an all-out rumble to figure out the, the the last one. So there you go. That's the that's what PFF thinks. That's what PFF thinks about their about this upcoming season. It's about eight wins for the Bengals, which is you know only uh, one fewer than I had. Uh, they have seven point seven. I'm saying, in which you know would be eight wins. I'm saying more like nine wins. Um, I think though that the Bengals could be looking at a 10 to 12 win season if things go right, because things coming out, the news coming out of training camp has been really solid. Uh, looking forward to this season. We'll keep doing this. I'll do something like this for the, for the defense. There'll be a lot more to talk about because there are a lot more new faces on the defense and a lot of uh, hints out of training camp that the scheme is going to be a little different and the way that they use their players are going to be a little different. So that's exciting. But for now, I'm going to end it here. I've been Mike. This has been Who Daily. Love you guys. Peace.